What's going on guys? Today I want to talk about something that is, I'm going to be honest, pretty ridiculous. Uh, this is a thing that I didn't actually believe to be true until an article came out this week on March 8th, which was yesterday, Friday. And it says a closer look at the stained glass planeswalkers. This was an article that was on the mothership, so uh, we know it's real. This is not just a rumor that's floating around Reddit or what have you. And did you see the War of the Spark teaser? It's great, right? With the rain and the somber music and all those candles. That's how this article starts. And those gorgeous stained glass planeswalkers. They're kind of hard to see in the video though, which is a shame because each piece is absolutely fantastic and was commissioned specifically for the teaser. That seems cool. They all looked great in the teaser. If you guys haven't done so, you should definitely check it out. Um, good thing your buddy Chris is here to show off the art so you can see it in all its glory. Uh, what's more, each of these 36 Planeswalkers will have a Planeswalker card in War of the Spark. Each of these 36 Planeswalkers will have a Planeswalker card in War of the Spark. I don't know how to even process that sentence. 36 planeswalkers in one set. So, it makes me assume that they're not all going to be mythics. So I can't imagine there's 36 mythics in a set and that they're all planeswalkers. That seems a little ridiculous. I also can't assume that they're going to be common or uncommon. As, as, uh, as many planeswalkers as this is, I can't imagine they're ever going to put a planeswalker at a common. Or an uncommon, rather, even. I just don't. I just don't see it happening. It's too big of a. It's too big of a card. It's too big of a card type. It's too big of a part of Magic to fill a, an uncommon slot. I just don't see it. However, there is some room. There is some wiggle room for Planeswalkers to fit any rare slot based on Lorwyn. Lorwyn was the first set the Planeswalkers came out in. There were no Mythic rares at the time, um, which is the the only reason they were rare. But they were still rare, right? So there is an argument to be made that says you know we made rare planeswalkers at one point and uh, you could just say well that's because mythics didn't exist then but it's something right it's something and so we have uh i can't foresee 36 mythic rares in one set that just seems a little ridiculous and the article goes on to say the card art will be different though in fact these stained glass versions aren't appearing on cards at all which is kind of sad because the stained glass art looks really sweet and uh my ear is itching. I apologize for that. But there's 36 of them. So I would really love to see these in some way, shape, or form and be able to collect all 36 of these sweet Planeswalker cards. But they are saying that they're not appearing on cards at all. You'll have to wait for War of the Spark previews in April, which is pretty close, to see the new cards. But each booster pack will contain a Planeswalker. So you should have no trouble getting your hands on them when the set is released. Each booster pack will contain a Planeswalker. So this is very similar to Dominaria, where every booster pack contained a, contained a legend. If your legend was mythic, that was your mythic in the pack. If your legend was uncommon, that was your legend in the pack, right? So, or that was your myth, that was your un, that was one of your uncommons in the pack, right? So it, it, you never got two mythics because you got a legendary mythic and a regular mythic. Like the, the, the mythic was taken up by the legendary slot in the packs that had a legendary mythic, right? So I, I assume that's going to be a similar case here where it, unlike it's... I assume it's not going to be like Innistrad. Innistrad is the other example that guaranteed a specific card in every pack, whereas it was a double face card. However, the nice thing about Innistrad was when you had a double face card in a pack, if it was a rare, let's say, you were also getting a rare in the pack. So you could get two rares in a pack of Innistrad. You could actually get up to, I think, I'm not sure if it was three or four. I think it was three, right? You could have a foil rare, a regular rare, and a dual face card rare. And you could actually get three different rares in a pack of Innistrad. I'm pretty sure you couldn't get a double-faced rare, a regular-faced rare, a double-faced foil rare, and a regular foil rare. I'm pretty sure you couldn't get four. I think three was the limit. So either one of these, it could go either way, right? You could get like a mythic planeswalker as your rare in a pack, but it could also be, there could also be a regular mythic in the pack because you're guaranteed a planeswalker anyway. So right, like it just it could be like the basic land slot in a pack where you're always going to get one regardless of rarity. Um, that's still very, very interesting. And, and again, like with 36 planeswalkers they might not even, maybe they don't even have rarities because there's just there's one in every pack right so maybe they're all the same rarity and they're all just special edition like if you guys were playing vintage vintage masters on magic online the power 
uh, the power of Ma- Black Lotus, all the mocks in uh, Time Walk, Time Time Twister, and Ancestral Recall. They weren't mythic. They weren't rare. They were a special rarity, which was like a, an orange rare symbol with uh, with a, with light radiating from it. You know, so it was a different. It was its own its own, its own rarity. And I'm wondering if like they just removed the rarity from these planeswalkers, uh, in an attempt to make it so that you could just stick a random one in, in every pack, right? Because then that kind of alleviates the rarity problem, where you're like, well, you don't want to make all 36 mythics in the set planeswalkers, right? Because that's kind of silly, right? Because you you need more diversity in that. You need more diversity in the mythic slot. You need more diversity in the rare slot. So to, to make all 36 mythics planeswalkers and have no other mythics whatsoever is kind of weird. However, you could also just make them all mythics and then add one in every pack, right? So then it's just a lottery. You're not you're not worried about like, oh, I opened an uncommon planeswalker. Oh, I opened a rare planeswalker. Oh, I opened a mythic planeswalker. You just open a planeswalker. Every pack has one planeswalker. That's still insane to me. Every draft you do, it's going to open you're going to open 24 planeswalkers in every draft. The total number of players is going to open 24 planeswalkers. I assume you're going to keep the planeswalkers. Like I assume you're always going to first pick the planeswalker that you open. I it's going to be weird to pass a planeswalker. Hey, I opened uh, my second pack. I'm not in white, but I opened a white planeswalker. I guess I'll pass it. That seems weird to me. Is it going to skew these draft formats where everyone just forces whatever planeswalkers they open? I have to assume with 36 planeswalkers in the set, they can't all be busted. There's going to be some pretty average planeswalkers. Like me and uh, my friend Matt Elk Tears from the stream, uh, he was here the other day and we were were kind of brainstorming and talking about, you know, what the abilities might be. And it was like, okay, so plus one, you scry one. Negative, Negative one, you scry two. You know, like it's going to be these really like... I'm wondering if they're just going to feel like glorified enchantments, right? Like they're going to feel like they like cards that have enchantment level abilities on them that can be attacked, you know, and and maybe that's kind of what you have to do when you're putting when you're just injecting a format, multiple formats, you know, modern, standard and and limited. These are presumably going to be the most affected formats, but like if, when you're injecting these three formats with 36 brand new planeswalkers in one set, that's kind of crazy. Um the rest of the article is literally just um, this sweet stained glass art. And we can go over the Planeswalkers. These are going to be the Planeswalkers that are included, all 36 of these. You have uh, Samut right here. Uh, you have Ugin. No, Nicobolus. My mistake. Nicobolus, you have Ashiok. Uh, I'm not sure who this is. It kind of looks like Elspeth, but like also kind of not really. Like, this staff doesn't look right. This burst of light from her hand doesn't look right. This is one of the ones that people aren't really sure about. There's there's two or three Planeswalkers that people just aren't sure of. This is obviously Domri Raid. Uh, this is... Venser, I think? Probably not Venser, because he's actually alive. I don't think Venser is alive. There was a list that, that people made. I'm not sure about this one. Uh, Ral Zarek, you have Tamio, you have Karn... Uh, you have Jay Ballard. You have Tybalt. This is one of the other ones that people aren't sure of. They think it might be one of the Chinese pl- Planeswalkers, or it could just be someone else that we don't know about. Uh, then you have, uh, what's her name? Not Tamio, but Kiora. You have Soren. You have Teferi. You have Angrath. Dovin. Uh, Johnny. Arlen Cord. Obnixilis. This is one of the other Chinese Planeswalkers. This one for sure is one of those, the green Chinese Planeswalker, even though the dog in the picture. I don't know his name. But you guys can look him up. Uh, then you have Huatli, you have Sarkon, you have Sahili Rai, you have Narset, uh, Nahiri, Ugin. This is uh, Davriel. I forgot that dude's name. We can actually look it up. Davriel Kane is the name of this guy. And then we have Vraska, you have uh, Kaya, Jace, Gideon, Liliana. Nissa, Chandra, and Vivian Reed. And so, like, those are all your Planeswalkers for the set. And that's a lot of Planeswalkers. 36 Planeswalkers injected into a single set, a single standard set, is utterly unheard of. It is actually insane to me. And I have no idea how that's going to play out. Uh, this is also the set that, that people have been talking about where they might have a way to deal with Planeswalker emblems in the set because it's such a Planeswalker-centric set. So you might have a card that says, like, destroy an emblem right which is really an interesting it's an interesting concept but i don't know if i'm really buying into it the reason being that like 
emblems exist outside of magic. They exist in like the kind of command zone where like you're not really able to interact with it, and it's kind of you're you're kind of breaking the fourth wall. And if you if you if you try to interact with these cards. And it might just be too much. Like, you might just be able to be like, hey, you've earned... Once you ultimate a Planeswalker and you make an emblem, you've actually kind of earned that emblem, right? Like, that's your reward for the work you've put into protecting that Planeswalker and uh, and and ticking up instead of using any of the more powerful negative abilities, right? So it's very interesting that you can wait for your opponent. And, like, plus, the other, the other, uh, the other angle of that is that you don't really have a ton of situations where this comes up, right? Like... When are you going to bring this card in? When are you going to board in a card that destroys an emblem? How frequently are your opponents getting emblems off on you? And it just doesn't really make any sense to do that. It's like, uh, it's like, it's like interacting with poison counters almost, where you can like, hey, give someone else one of your poison counters. It's, I mean, it's a possibility. I don't even know if their card like that exists, but it feels weird. It, it has a weird feeling to it, where it feels like you're kind of interacting with something you shouldn't be interacting with. Um, but that's just my two cents. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if they would ever do something like that. But the, the problem is. That, like, I don't think the situation where an emblem uh, is really ruining a game really comes up a, 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 that much that you really need protection from it. Like, hey, I really need to do something about these emblems. They're so problematic. It's weird because you're like, if you bring this card in, it's basically a dead card up until the point where your opponent makes an emblem. <laughs> and, like, if why wouldn't you just bring in a card that actually stops them from getting to that point instead? Like... If, you, if, you, if they had a card that, like, a Vraska's Destruction, where it, like, kills a Vraska Emblem, wouldn't you just rather play Vraska's Contempt to get rid of the Planeswalker before that point? It's a really interesting... It's an interesting idea, but it seems... It seems almost unnecessary, if that makes sense. So, anyway, I, I would love to know what you guys think. Like, 36 Planeswalkers in one set is pretty insane, and I really don't know how to parse that information. Like, the drafts are going to be insane. I cannot wait to draft it. Standard... Uh, it's probably going to be pretty ridiculous with this many this many creatures, this many planeswalkers uh, just being injected to it at once. So I have to assume, like I said, I have to assume some of these are going to be not very good at all. Uh, similar to like some of the uncommon legends in Dominaria, where like some are just like some are just kind of okay. Um, you know, like Slinvada, right? Like Slinvada is a huge creature. You're not going to be able to cast it regularly. It's not going to have a huge impact in constructed play. It just happens to be a big, fat, dumb, legendary creature, which works good in limited. You know. But I'm really curious what you guys think. It's it's a very interesting concept. This is something unlike Wizards have, has ever done before. 36 Planeswalkers and just injecting them at one time is ridiculous. And uh, I'm really curious what you guys think and how this shakes out. Like we're gonna, ha I'll I'll let you guys know, you know, in the future when we have more information or when the spoilers start, we'll talk about it some more. But yeah, this is a big deal. This is a this is a pretty crazy thing. And one Planeswalker in every pack is kind of nuts. Like, if I just open any pack of War of the Spark, there's going to be a Planeswalker in it. That's such a weird feeling. And I still can't tell if there's going to be common or uncommon Planeswalkers in this set. Because that feels weird. It just feels wrong. Right? Like, Planeswalkers are so coveted. They're like, they're like magic loyalty. Where they're always mythics. You always have Planeswalkers as mythics because they're so powerful and unique and iconic. So it'd be weird to think that, like, these Planeswalkers are just all of a sudden going to be in different slots rare i can accept because i think it's still rare i think they are you know for 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 lack of a better word they are still rare however when you have uncommon and common the 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 rarities the names of these rarities alone don't fully convey the importance of planeswalkers in the game of magic and that's my concern and like i said they could just make them all mythic or they could just make them all a special rarity and just put one in every pack so it doesn't really matter what the rarity is they're all mythics essentially because you're just getting one randomly out of 36 so i don't know it's interesting it's a really interesting concept i'm looking forward to seeing how they do it and uh hopefully it works out i i'm looking forward to drafting this set far far more than guilds of ravnica and ravnica legion so far and i think for pretty obvious reasons so yeah definitely let me know what you guys think in the comments what you guys think of uh war of the spark what you guys think of rav of um 36 planeswalkers in in the set what, what do you think of one planeswalker per, per pack and what your predictions are for this set because I'm, I'm really looking forward to it and if you guys are interested you can go to manatraders.com there's a link in the description and uh, you can get 20 percent off your first three months of a subscription if you are looking to rent cards physical cards or if you're looking to rent magic online cards you can also check out meundies.com slash frank lapore for 15 percent off along with free shipping and free return and you can also check out coolstuff.com coolstuffinc.com and you will get 5% off with the promo code FRANK. So all those links are in the description below. You can check those out. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you next time.